Ever since I was little, my mom made it very clear to me that she was embarrassed about certain aspects of our culture. She would never let me bring kimchi to school after a certain point, and when non-Korean friends came over after school, she would always apologize in advance for the smell. Yesterday, I went to my mom's house to make a kimchi making video, and my mom kept insisting that we sauce the kimchi on a table instead of the floor, even though in all my memory, it's always been done on the floor. Once again, my mom was worried about appearances, and I thought she was just being overly self-conscious. I posted a picture of us doing our kimchi squat on Twitter, and then somebody replied with this. And I was furious. Not for me, but for my mom. My 72-year-old mom, who spent the last half of her life assimilating into this country, still needs to be afraid of this. That she still needs to be self-conscious about her culture. That she's still being told that the white way is the only right way. For the record, I'm done apologizing. And so is my mom. When I was in college, my mom kicked me out of the house and told me she didn't love me anymore. And what had I done to push her over the edge? I got my eyebrow pierced. The irony is that she'd been living with me in my piercing for several weeks with very minor grumblings, but it wasn't until she walked into my brother dyeing his hair blonde that it somehow turned into a fight about my eyebrow piercing. After screaming at me for about 15 minutes, she walked downstairs to our living room, slid into our peach leather sofa, tucked her knees under her small frame, and calmly repeated, I don't love you anymore. Please get out of my house. Eventually, a few weeks later, my eyebrow piercing fell out and we laughed about the whole thing, but what I will never ever forget from that day, as long as I live, is my father. The man who'd never said I love you to me, had never shown me even a moment of tenderness. The look of sheer horror on his face as he turned to my mother, someone with whom he'd never disagreed in front of the kids, and said very loudly, you can't talk to her like that. Take it back. Whenever I came knocking at my mother's door after a fight with my ex, she never got mad at him. She always got mad at me, not for fighting with him or for coming to her house, but for going back to him over and over again. When I showed up, tears caking my face, she wouldn't even say hello. She'd just say, to. And when I'd leave to go back to him, she'd say, don't come back. I don't want to see it anymore. His love was like a drug, one that I was addicted to no matter how hard my mother tried to wean me off of it. In July 2012, I made the mistake of interrupting him while at dinner. That night, at around two in the morning over shards of broken glass, I ran barefoot out the door of our house, my dog Daisy in my arms. I can still hear her heartbeat fluttering against my own as his fingers grazed my arm, nearly pulling me back into our home. Amber light flooded her doorstep as Amma swung the door open. She didn't say to, but I answered her anyway. This time, I'm not going back. Amma paused for a second, and then, good. Because if he ever shows his face here, I'm gonna beat the shit out of him. When I was growing up, both my parents worked during the day, so my grandmother basically raised me until I was 14. She made me breakfast, taught me how to swing really, really high, and yelled at me when I didn't brush my teeth. But Hanmani didn't speak English or drive, and one day, I got really sick at school. I was eight years old, and the school nurse called home, and she handed the phone to me when Hanmani answered because she didn't speak English. I told her I was too sick to stay at school, and I was already wondering, how was she gonna pick me up? Well, she ended up walking all the way. It was a little cold, so she wrapped a scarf around her head and wore a shawl, and I was so weak with fever, I started to cry as soon as I saw her, because I knew even then that it was just us against the world, that I had to protect her as much as she did me from the bitter cold. So she put her arm around my shoulders as if bracing me against the whole universe, and we walked home together. Later, she made me some chun, Korean-style fritters or pancakes. These are the kinds of memories that make me love Korean food. Because even though Harmony never ever said the words I love you in Korean or English in my entire life, she didn't have to. 